The Sprinter is a real workhorse. But if there's an oil leak with drop buildup in the dry flange of the axle, the journey can end up in the workshop. To repair the leak, exchange the radial shaft sealing ring and the coupling flange. Begin the repair by taking off the wheels. Next, loosen the brake shoes from the brake disc. This way the axle can later turn freely. Do the same with the drum parking brake. Now disconnect the drive shaft by unscrewing four screws. Attach the shaft at a suitable place with a cable tie. In the axial drive there's gear oil which must be let out. Before you go on working, check the gear oil for defects. You'll recognize these as foreign bodies in the oil. With your finger, test the oil in the outlet. Another way to notice damage is the rough running of the bearings or axial play. Should you find damage, then you must renew the axle. With us, everything is okay, and you can close the oil plug again. Tighten with a torque of 60 Newton meters and then turn the screw a further 90 degrees. After the repair, the axle must show a frictional resistance of between 0.1 and 0.3 Newton meters above what you've measured here. So now determine the frictional torque. Read the value after the fifth rotation and do this while turning. Turn with a speed of about one rotation per second. In our case, the value is 1.4 Newton meters. Write down your measured value and check it after the repair. Now the radial sealing ring can be removed. For this, remove the protection of the 12 point nut and unscrew. But attention, please do not use an impact driver for this job, otherwise the axial drive could be damaged. A hold wrench together with a torque wrench are the right tools for this job. The coupling flange is next on the axle bevel gear. This is removed with a puller. Now you have access to the radial sealing ring. With a punch, tap the ring on one side to ease the pressure. Next, lever out the radial sealing ring using suitable tools. Pay attention not to damage the bearings behind it. Don't clean the ring, just send it as it is to the used parts return. Also send the flange. Before you insert the new radial sealing ring, however, clean the seat of the sealing ring in the housing and the front side of the taper roller bearings. Now use a drift to tap the ring evenly around the housing. With your fingers, check whether the ring is absolutely flush. This is very important in order to provide for a good seal. Afterwards, mount the new cupping flange and tighten the 12-point nut with a preliminary 30 Newton meters of torque. The shaft may have no axial play. Check this with a measuring gauge fastened to a magnet holder. Find a suitable place for the holder and lay the measuring rod in front of the flange. Check the play by shaking the drive flange. In our case, there's no axial play. If it is not free of play, you still have the possibility to increase the torque in steps of 10 Newton meters to a maximum of 60 Newton meters. If this doesn't work and there's continued play, then the rear axle must be replaced. To make sure that the tapered bearings roll freely and line up with the setting, turn the drive flange clockwise 15 times and 15 times anti-clockwise. Next, mark the nut and turn it another 15 degrees. This is a half a 12 point. Repeat the turning procedure and measure the drag torque. 
Now mark the second spot of the 12 point nut and tighten the nut another 15 degrees. Now turn the bearings for the last time by rotating the dry flat another 15 times in both directions. Now check the frictional resistance one more time. For this you need the drag torque measurement which you wrote down at the beginning. With us it was 1.4 Newton meters. The current drag torque must be between 0.1 and 0.3 Newton meters above this beginning value. We now measure the value of 1.6 Newton meters. That's in the tolerance range. If this is not the case with you, then the rear axle must be replaced. Do not under any circumstances turn the nut to get the right drag torque value. In our vehicle, everything is okay, and you can secure the nut again. The locking lug must be secured at the left groove. This is against the turning direction. Now you've done the most difficult part, and you can attach the drive shaft again. And don't forget to fill with new gear oil. Check the filling amounts for the axle model. Set the parking brake again and mount the wheels. And now the Sprinter is ready again for the street.